Now, if you've ever ate at Chick-fil-A, and you are a big fan of Chick-fil-A, because they're pretty popular throughout many cities. And so in this particular city in California, they said that Chick-fil-A may be declared a public nuisance. Now, Chick-fil-A is causing some squawking <laughs> in some Southern California places. And one of the multiple locations across the U.S., and if you've ever been to California, is Santa Barbara. Have you ever been to Santa Barbara in California? Well, that's where the squawking is going on, where the fast food chain is finding itself to be a victim of its own success. Can you imagine that you are successful and then people start complaining about your success and you become a victim of your own success? In Santa Barbara, the city is close to dubbing its sole Chick-fil-A a public nuisance due to long drive through lines that often has cars filled with hungry customers backed into the street for hours at a time. Let me tell you something. Uh, Chick-fil-A has some good food. They really do. And uh, Santa Barbara says, you know what? Your food might be good, but we are tired of you all blocking our driveways. We tired of these long lines. You have become a nuisance in our city. This eatery waffle, you know, uh, eatery restaurant, excuse me, is known for its waffle fries and chicken sandwiches, uh, but they have a restaurant that's been there since 2013 in Santa Barbara, and it's drawn a steady flow of patrons whose vehicles block nearby driveways and sidewalks and make city buses, even buses now, and emergency vehicles find other routes, according to city officials. Now, you know that's bad when the emergency vehicles gotta go other routes just to get to at an emergency situation. Now, that part is very serious. And even buses, hey, you might have to take public transportation to get to work. And now the bus got to take a different route just to get to the bus stop. Or you might have to walk farther because maybe they have to temporarily move the bus stop for you to get there because they can't get through the traffic. Now, I remember uh, back some years ago, uh, in and out, they moved. They used to be on um, a city in San Bernardino, if you've heard of that before. And they actually, um, they 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 were by the freeway. Oh boy, it was bad. It was bad. And then they was in a uh, right off. It was a mall there in a shopping center, but that's still there. But they were right off of the freeway, the main road, I believe, is Second Street. Yes, and it was bad. So they actually moved. Now, that was a good location for them because they made big, big money. And now where they're at, they're farther down. And I remember it was something about their revenue might go, be cut into because of where they were originally located and where they are now. But they're still thriving. People, if they love the food, they're going to come where you are. That's the way it is. If you got good service, you got good food. And a lot of people love in and out. And I'm going to tell you something about in and out. The city, Moreno Valley, in and out. They actually had to do some, uh, you know, some construction uh, in their driveway as well so that the cars are have a way, you know, to drive in and drive around, you know, that type of thing. And the reason why is because they were backed up all out on this street that's a very busy street and there's a lot of businesses around it and it's a Home Depot across the street and and shopping centers and, you know, and little small business and all of that. And, and they had to do some things too, because that street that they were, that they're on is very, very busy. And the cars will be backed up out in the street and people could not get by. And I tried to avoid that area as much as possible. And I said, I don't want to, you know, have to be stuck. And sometimes you have to go that way or you have to forget, you know, you forget that that's the way it was. Uh, back then when, uh, you know, at that time. But anyway, thank God that I don't live over there and I don't have to go that way. So thank the Lord. But however, I understand about this traffic because after a while you get tired of folks blocking your driveways. You get tired of all the traffic trying to get to your house. Now you have got to run for the bus. If it's been moved, now the emergency vehicles can't get through. That is a delayed time and getting to an emergency. If they're, you know what I'm saying? So let's get started. Let's go ahead and finish moving up with this video. You know, I can tell you some things 
you know, I, I like to talk and I like to give some information, but let me let me go ahead and finish up this video. Chick-fil-A's drive through lane heightens the odds of traffic collisions and pedestrians getting injured if they're on bikes. They might get injured because people might be trying to hurry up and pull in when they see an open and they might not see the, the pedestrian or they might not see the, the biker that's riding their bike, right? And peak volumes, the drive through blocks one lane of traffic for as much as 90 minutes on weekdays. Wow, weekdays and for as much as 155 minutes on Saturdays, according to a city traffic report. Now, you know, that's big. And so the city traffic engineer, police chief and community development director have evaluated the situation and believe that the persistent traffic back up onto State Street is a public nuisance and that the nuisance is caused by the operation of a drive through at the Chick-fil-A restaurant, the document stated. I'm telling you, they're going to have to change the way their, their drive through is, like, you know, in and out has done. And matter of fact, um, yeah, where they have to, you know, do some lanes, you know, they're they going to have to look into that and make it a big assessment. And if they want to stay there because the business is good, then that's what they're going to have to do. I know in the city that I reside in, we got, we got a Chick Fil A, and it, it uh, it's their drive through. You go in this like in a parking lot area, so you just have to be careful of oncoming traffic in the parking lot. But so far, so good that we're not, you know, our our, our Chick Fil A, excuse me, not we not, but our Chick Fil A is not off of the not off of the main thoroughfare or street where that's happening though. So Kristen Snedden, a member of Santa Barbara City Council, believes the restaurant may have outgrown the location and that the problem can't be fixed, according to the Santa Barbara News Press. And, you know, sometimes that happens, like with the in and out in San Bernardino. Uh, if you've heard of San Bernardino, that city, if you reside there or whatever, or you've been there before, they had to move. They outgrew theirs. And that was one of the concerns, too, was that they had outgrown that location. And so that might be a possibility there that they have just outgrown it and they might have to start looking for another place to go. But I do like Chick-fil-A. So I'm not, this is not a negative video, but it is what it is. So Chick-fil-A has a good problem here. They are so successful. They have outgrown their site. It's possible they were oversized for that site to begin with. Snedden told a council meeting earlier this month, the newspaper reported, but you know what? Sometime um, that's true. You have to look to the future and project what's going to happen in the future when you are looking for a, a spot or a space to fill with your business, you know, and Chick-fil-A, a lot of people buy Chick-fil-A just like in and out just like Starbucks. And even with the Starbucks, uh, you know, I've seen a location where uh, they can get backed up in the um, parking lot of this little strip mall and there is a Jiffy Lube there. And so they have to make sure they're not blocking the entrance and exit where people are entering and exiting the parking lot off of the main road, you know, the main thoroughfare expressway. Okay. So sometime, you know, when these business open up, especially things like that, that's really popular, you got to project future outcomes, you know, are we going to, uh, you know, so that you can have room to grow and that you can be able to uh, update your parking lot for people to get in and get off the street to keep uh, traffic flowing on the public street, you know, that's one of the things you cannot impact. Your business should not impact traffic because if it starts impacting traffic and there's enough complaints and enough tax money and enough public figures, you know how that go, they will do something about it. And so uh, now the uh, it's having, this is having the busiest drive through windows of any national chain in a 2019 study, Chick-fil-A. And at the city council session, Snedden and other members unanimously approved moving toward a potential public nuisance designation. Chick-fil-A representatives asked the council to delay the nuisance designation and give it additional time to work on fixing the problem. The council agreed to continue a public hearing until June 7th. Travis Collins, the franchise operator of the restaurant, said in a statement emailed to CBS Money Watch, he watching his money by Chick-fil-A that he wants to be a good neighbor. See, that's how you got to do it. You have got to come back and speak good, not negative. He is watching his money and he wants to be a good neighbor. And I can appreciate him saying that. 
He wants to be a good neighbor. See, your heart got to be good, too, when you're in business. And this is a franchise owner, okay? The opera franchise operator of the restaurant. He wants to be a good neighbor. And he was continuing efforts to ease traffic issues. See, you got to come together. Come together, consensus, collaboration, be cooperative, come together and see what you can do and work together. Because if you try to work against the government agency, they are going to just say, nah, we're going to shut you down. And so he's trying to work and be a good neighbor. And that includes hiring additional staff and third party traffic control. Okay. And for some people living nearby, the traffic issue has been brewing. You know what that means, brewing for years. And it's only of late that the problem is getting serious attention by the city and the company. And in the past, it felt like the complaint were taken half serious. Oh, yeah, you know, we, we hear you, we hear you. You know how they do when you have real complaints and they do that? Because I'm part of my city council, uh, you know, going as a, a, a neighbor in my, you know, as a resident in my community. So I go and talk and they know who I am because I speak up. And so, therefore, sometimes they do take your complaints half, half seriously. And you have got to continue to bring those complaints in a positive, professional manner with a resolution and present it at the podium. That's a good thing to do and have your documentation and call on the city officials that can do something about it. And not only that, when they refer you to the people that they say you need to talk to, talk to them and document that you've done that. So when it does go all the way up city council and get to the mayor, they are more willing, the mayor, to support your cause when they can see that you've done your homework. And also try to get other residents involved so that you have support because one man ain't no show and a team is always a good thing. A team is always a good thing. When you can get people collaborating together, like, uh, like minds think alike, great minds think alike. But when you can get like-minded people to work out issues, that is a good thing. It's a true good thing. So in the past, it felt like, the, yeah, they said complaints were half taken, said this resident, oh, and he told the LA Times, but over the years, you've had Chick-fil-A putting together their fixes that really did not do much to fix the traffic problem. They kind of like tried to fix it. You know how they band-aid things. You can't have band-aids because eventually that band-aid is going to wear off. It's going to get old. And band-aids are supposed to be changed. They're not supposed to just stay on there forever. That's that's unsanitary. It can cause infections if you have a wound. So you do know that band-aids have to be changed regularly. One time I had a wound and I almost used a whole box of band-aids just to keep the band-aids fresh and my wound clean out and sanitized. You hear what I'm saying, people? Okay. But anyway, then you have the city coming forward with a possible nuisance title and the corporation is now saying, oh my goodness. But see, let me go back. Because he is, let me see who this is again. What is his name? Travis Collins. So you know what, Travis? This is how you said it. Um, let's see. Travis, you're saying, oh my goodness. Please just give us more time to solve this. I'm trying to do it in a man voice. Oh my goodness. What? You don't say. Please just give us more time. You know. Just can you give us more time to solve this problem? Okay. So drive through business are you unusual in Santa Barbara as the city has prohibited their construction for more than four decades. Uh, but Filet was grandfathered into its location mm. as it was previously a Burger King drive through with nothing like the current traffic. You know, Burger King don't have anything on Chick-fil-A. Now, I don't have nothing against Burger King because back in the day, back, back, back in the day, Back in the day, um, I had, I used to eat at Burger King. It was certain things I would get at Burger King. And I'm going to just keep it real with you. Not everything, but there were certain things. Me and my best friend and uh, I little little ones at the time would go to Burger King. And they always had those good deals, you know. Um, you know, so we would go to Burger King. And um, they never, they used to be busy where that Burger King was, but not like the Chick-fil-A traffic. And we got to tell the truth. Chick-fil-A traffic is just, it's insurmountable. It's off the chain. In certain places, it really is. I've seen it for myself. And so anyway, they were grandfathered in because it's like, hey, if it was a, a, a fast food here before, why can't we come and be a fast food, right? So Chick-fil-A's 
uh, long line drive through lines have ruffled feathers everywhere. Ruffled feathers. Now you hear me? You have some feathers you need ruffled. Do you have some feathers over there that's getting ruffled? You know, like the bird feathers. Sometimes I see the bird feathers in my driveway when they've been, you know, and them birds be getting on my nerves because you know what? It's some things, you know, they come from everywhere. Sometimes you're like, where are these birds coming? Yeah, you know, they be up there at the the throw whatever on the light pole making noise and i'm like stop making all that noise but you know that you know birds been around for years we 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 tend to you know invade natural habitat and territory territories and then we get upset right but chick-fil-a was grandfathered in and yes they do have a long line i've seen it now but business owners in toledo ohio and look they even got some other little cities over here some examples toledo ohio Beaumont, Texas. Have you heard of Beaumont, Texas? I have. And Union, New Jersey. All have sued Chick-fil-A in 2020 20, after allegedly that long drive through lines were turning away customers, according to Insider. Now, the publication also reported finding dozens of such complaints, police interventions, and significant traffic woes related to Chick-fil-A's drive through lines in more than 20 states in recent years. This is the first time I'm hearing about some complaints you know that's been filed with the states and the counties and the cities i this is my first time i haven't heard but it's the first time but it's not my first time being aware that chick-fil-a brings lots of traffic because people uh like what chick-fil-a is giving out they like what chick-fil-a is serving and they make it a point to spend their money where they want to eat now, in Norwalk, Connecticut, Chick-fil-A is proposing that it get rid of an existing drive through and rebuild it on the other side of the building to ease traffic backups occurring since it opened two years ago, a local newspaper, The Hour, recently reported. And that's what I was saying. They have to rebuild the drive through you know, make it make some lanes so they can get their customers off of the street and stop being a public nuisance on the road, blocking major thoroughfares and people trying to get where they're going and you know it can get very very agitating annoying and a lot of frustration and even even cause anxiety when you have got to deal with the traffic and you're trying to get somewhere most of the time when you're trying to get to work or a doctor or a dental appointment and you don't want to miss it or even an eye exam or you got to go to the hospital for your scheduled surgery whatever the case may be a scheduled procedure but you know chick-fil-a I'm glad that Travis is trying to work with that community down there in that city. So one of the issues behind the congestion that this is the only Chick-fil-A around. Maybe they ought to consider building another Chick-fil-A. But you know, they're kind of strategic when it comes to, you know, building Chick-fil-A's. They're kind of strategic because, you know, that's just like, you know, if you got one here and it's making good money, you know, when you look at the income coming in and you look at the survey a demographic area and a geographic area and they look at those things and they go hmm will this make money over here because sometimes they open up too many so you have to be careful with that and you got to look at will it thrive over here in that community is there enough uh you know people in households that are going to patronize that particular business so therefore um let's see elizabeth sucky wow Suki Sucky, an attorney for Chick-fil-A, told a city zoning commission last year. Now, the closest around are in Danbury and Brookfield. Folks really like this product and the customer service that goes along with it is very popular. People will go where they get good food and good customer service. That's a must. OK. Also in Connecticut, Brookfield city officials last year opted to build an extra lane for cars crossing into Chick-fil-A interest with the federal government. Guess what? Picking up 80 percent of the tab. Man, man, man. Well, I wish they'd pick up 80% of my tab. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. 80% of the tab for Chick-fil-A. And we got homeless folks out here. Chick-fil-A don't need the government to pick up 80% of their tab. Matter of fact, Chick-fil-A can afford to build their own drive through and, and redo their drive through I'm saying that now because we got a lot of homeless all over the world. And we send an aid all over. 800, I saw Ooh, you know, I saw $800 million in an article being sent. You know where it was sent. I'm not I'm not saying nothing, you know, in a way that to be derogatory, you know, or to, 
I just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and we have folks here homeless, struggling for them to build housing for the homeless. You know, rent problems out the roof. People live, it's people homeless because they couldn't afford the rent anymore because landlords trying to recoup from the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Housing prices, if you want to buy a home, it's through the roof. I'm telling you, they're building houses even around me. And and the, just a single story is $500,000 for the single story, people. And the thing is, with that is the housing that they're building now, they don't put in the basics. They put in all the upgrades and try to sell you on the upgrades. So if you want to step down, you have to ask the salesperson in the office, what is the step down, the basic, if you're trying to buy in these new housing developments? I'm, I'm not kidding you, because the new developments, they are building them and putting in the upgrades to get, they say they want to sell you on the upgrades because that's how good the house looks. I'm telling you, and you go, I like that. I like that countertop. I like, and then you be like, well, by the time you like, 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 and go into that office and sit, sit down, and they chair, 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 and they go, oh, the 500000 is just the basic. Well, show me the basic. And then you'd be like, but I don't like that. That's real basic. You know what I'm saying? So by the time they get done, you about 600 over the top. Okay? So we understand. So when the government is sitting here talking about you going to pick up 80% of the tab of Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A making money. They can do their own driveway. And just like the Walmarts, when they were bringing the Walmarts into the cities and they were giving them government uh, you know, government money funding. I forgot the word right now. Forgive me, you guys. But they were giving them government uh, money to come in and Walmart don't need the money either. Do your research on Walmart and the family members that own Walmart and got a stake in the company. Do your research. I remember back in the day when I was in junior college and we saw a video. Hmm, let me hit my sofa. We saw a video of Walmart. And how they lived and the money they was bringing in and how they was mistreating the people over there in those third world countries and in the other countries. But they don't have labor laws like we do in America. So I resent the fact that they're giving them some money. Stop it. They got their own money. Help the cities that need the money. What about the homeless people? What about addictions? Come on now, people. We need things. And what about children? We need healthy things for children to do. What about schools? What about childcare and after school, you know, programs that's gonna help children make better choices and better decisions and how they can learn to get along with other people and stop all this bullying and taking guns to school and killing up school. I gotta throw this in here, people, because it's not always about, you know, being funny or bringing trauma, you know, and negativity, it's about information. And we got to bring the information because somebody might not know what you know and they might be needing the information. So I'm going to bring it and I guess I'm going to expound on some things. Now, this is not making sense. You were going to give them 80%. We got people struggling right now, even to get jobs, to go back to work, or even the job they in, they are not getting the wages they need to take care of their families. And you was getting ready to help Chick fil A by putting 80% of the tab. No, Chick-fil-A can put their own tab. Okay, let's move on. CT Insider reported this month in another town in the state, Fairfield, in November, denied the change proposal to take over a former restaurant with officials saying they made the decision after considering Norwalk's experience with the change. Now, traffic also regularly causes congestion near a Chick-fil-A close to one of the busiest intersections in Brooklyn, New York, slowing vehicles to a crawl and causing backups. Efforts to mitigate the problem, including placing metal barriers in the street to deter people from double parking, have been only partially successful, according to one local restaurant. I would not tear my car up trying to get to a Chick-fil-A and any other restaurant. We just going to have to forego it and go find another place to eat and then try to enjoy it another time, right? And in Redding, California, a newly opened Chick-fil-A drew a long line of cars in March of last year. Mm according to a local CBS affiliate, and had police issuing a traffic alert to heat off congestion outside the eatery. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Chick-fil-A, you is in the media. 
You are causing some feathers to be ruffled. You are causing the leather feathers to be ruffled, Chick-fil-A. So hurry up and try to solve your problem. And Traffic Collins, I appreciate you trying to work with the city. But uh, local feathers are being ruffled. You know, some of them people might have on leather. You know what I'm saying? Leather feathers. Have you ever seen leather feathers before? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, rough, uh, feathers are being ruffled by Chick-fil-A. And uh, Chick-fil-A, you know, you got to do better with that that, that drive through You got to do something with that, that drive through Chick-fil-A. But we do like Chick-fil-A's. A lot of people do eat at Chick-fil-A. And when they have that the free day where you go in and you got to wear something with the cowl on it, you know, that's pretty cool. You got some jewelry, a necklace. Don't forget about that because they may have that day coming. I forgot what day it is. And you wear your, your, your jewelry or you wear a shirt. You do something that's black and white that resembles, you know, uh, it's not a cow. What is it? A chicken? Whatever it is. I don't know, you guys. You know, uh, tell me in the comments. I don't know. But it's something that you wear, you know, black and white or whatever it is. And uh, they give you some free, a free meal or something like that, you know. So, uh, yeah, let, you know, everything's good, though. Everything's good with Chick-fil-A. You just need to take care of your business, Chick-fil-A. Bye now.